Now you could also be asked to write the domain and range of a function in interval notation. Or a question could include it, or you could see it in a mark scheme or an old textbook. So it's important that you know um, how to write it in this format and what it means. So when we say the domain uh, x could be any real number, what we're really saying is that x could be any real number from negative infinity, so all the way down there, but obviously not including negative infinity because that's not a number, all the way up to positive infinity, but obviously not including positive infinity because that's not a number either, right? So we're saying x can be any number between negative infinity uh, and I'm using a curved bracket because I'm not including that value, okay, because it's not a value, up to positive infinity, curly, uh, curved bracket, uh, because I'm using a curved bracket because infinity is not a value either, okay? So this is exactly saying this. Now, if I said that f of x is greater than 3, then... I would be saying, well, f of x can be any value from 3, but not including 3. So I'll use a curved bracket to be, mean not including, all the way up to positive infinity. And a curved bracket because, well, I'm not including infinity. OK, infinity is not a number. So any time that I'm talking about infinity in interval notation, uh, and I use that, it has to come with a curved bracket, OK, because it's not including. So what that means is, effectively, when you think about like number lines, and you might have done this at school, going from 3, you're not including 3, so you use a hollow dot, and it goes all the way along the uh, number line up to infinity. Okay, So that's, that's what that means. Now, if x is less than or equal to 5, then on our number line, we'd be going from 5 down to negative infinity. So I don't include negative infinity, so I used a curved bracket. But when I want to include 5, because 5 is included here, I use a square bracket. So a square bracket gets used when it is included. Okay. So as I said, infinity will always have a curved bracket. But the equality here is telling you to use a square bracket. So if f of x belongs to real numbers, just like it was here, f of x belongs to minus infinity up to positive infinity. Right, now, if I said the domain is this, then you could, much as we did with set notation, okay, you could say this as, right, I'm going from minus 1 up to infinity, like that. And I've also got from negative infinity up to 5, ooh, negative infinity up to 5, included, because the equality. Um, and I want to find out where they overlap. And where they overlap is what I'm interested in. But this looks absolutely ghastly. Okay, Much of the same way as with set notation, we don't need to do that. Um, so instead we would just have minus 1 up to 5, 5 with a square bracket, minus 1 with a curved bracket, 5 with a square bracket, and it's much more compact, and that's perfectly fine, OK? However, when we get to this example here, I've got to say, well, f of x belongs to, well, I'm less than or equal to minus 2, so that's minus infinity curved bracket, up to minus 2 square bracket, and I've got the greater than or equal to 3, so including the 3 and up to positive infinity with a curved bracket. But I don't want the intersection of those because, well, those two regions don't overlap, and so that would be empty. So I must use um, the union to say I want this or this. OK, and that is how we would have to write it in interval notation. Um, there's kind of no real getting around that. 
So that's how we can write the domain range of a function in interval notation.